Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're fixing some of our state machine code to improve organization and logic. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. This episode will be a little different in that we're going back through some of the code we've already done. The goal here is to clean up the logic a bit and make improvements to the code structure. There might be some jumping around, so I apologize for any confusion, and I'll try to be as clear and concise as possible. Honestly, I questioned whether to just do this behind the scenes, but I thought it was really important to show every single step of this process and the why behind the choices that I'm making. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the code logic for our state script. Our states exist within our state machine system and they are actually working fine, but as we add more states or even other actors like enemies later on, we want to keep our core logic as modular as possible. Right now, I'm setting references to my animation player in each state script, and my player reference is in my global variable script. What I would prefer is to just reference each one time in a parent class of my state logic and make it so I can use this same state logic for any character or enemy in the future. To do that, I'm going to create an additional class in between my state class and my individual states. This class will be named player movement state, and the script will create the references to my animation player and my main player script. My individual states then will extend my player movement state and therefore already have any variables that exist in that main state. In the ready function, we first need to use awaits until the owner is ready. This means our main scene parent node has loaded and all of the info and children nodes that it has are accessible. Then we create a new variable player and reference a new class name in our FPS controller script. Within the ready function, we set player to equal the owner, which is our parent node script as a player class. Now I'm doing this because if I want to use the same state machine and state logic in another scene that isn't a player, but say an enemy, it's just going to take that main parent node again and set it as the owner. For the animation player, we create a new animation variable with our animation player type, then set the variable to equal our animation player node reference that we set in our player script. Now in our idle, walking, and sprinting states, we extend our new player movement state class and that gives us access to the variables we just created in each of these state scripts. Then back in our state machine script, we also need to add the same await code to make sure we have all of our nodes loaded before we jump into our first state, or that first state is gonna throw us some errors. Okay, so we haven't really touched our player script for a little bit. And now that I've added a full on state machine and states to the player logic, we can clean up some of this code and migrate some of it to individual states. The first thing we can do is deprecate or comment out all of our crouching logic for now, because we're going to be moving this to the state machine pretty soon. We can do the same for any jump logic because we're also gonna be moving that to our state machine. Additionally, the set movement speed function is also gonna be deprecated because our state machine is actually gonna be handling our player's speed. We're left with roughly 95 to 98 lines of code that holds our mouse movement, camera movement, and input movement. And honestly, even the camera movement could probably be moved somewhere else too. Now, because I'm cleaning so much code here, I'm going to link to this fresh script as it is right now in the description. Patreon members obviously will get the finished project. Now we can reorganize our other code into callable functions that we can use in our state scripts. We'll create three new functions update gravity, update input, and update velocity. Our update gravity function will hold our velocity y minus equals gravity times delta. Our update input will use our input and direction code. And then our update velocity will just hold our move and slide function. Now in our individual states, we can call these when needed in the update function. Now, even with just these changes, our script should still be operating the same way as they were before. But now that we have made our code a bit more modular, we can implement our movement speed changes again, but with our new functions. Rather than hold every speed value in our player script, we can have each state contain a unique speed setting. 
we add an export variable for each state. Then in our update input function, where we use speed to adjust our player's velocity, we can add a parameter that we'll use to pass our state speed settings when we run the function. We can do the same for our acceleration and deceleration variables. Now by doing it this way, it also means that we can have different acceleration and deceleration settings for each of our states. Then in each state, we add our new speed variables to our update input parameter. We also need to update our set animation speed to just use the speed variable we set in our state, rather than just a variable in our player script. And we can also swap out our global player references to our new player variable from our player movement state script. And with that, our player script is much cleaner and our states are a lot easier to customize. I've also noticed an input bug with the states. When I create an input check in a state script, I only want to run those checks when I'm in that state. Right now, with my input function method, it's checking for those inputs all the time. So I need to change how I check for my inputs, which is actually a pretty easy fix. Rather than use the input function method, I check within my update function with this code. My update function only runs when the state is active, which is what I want. With those changes, I feel my code is a lot cleaner and ready for more functionality. I'm not 100% on my animation transitions yet, but we'll approach that in the next few episodes. And if something is weird or didn't make sense in this tutorial, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the written tutorials and the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.